Today we are going to talk about a very important lesson learned for a friend of mine and I'm going to show you how we sort of helped him out uh, with some software that is free that I just learned about that everybody should have regardless of whether or not you think you're going to use it. After all, it's free. This is not sponsored by them by any means, but this is a huge learning lesson that he's now paying for that you guys might be able to keep yourself paying the same price, but at least being prepared in case it does happen. You might be wondering why I'm holding this laptop and we're gonna explain why this laptop has traveled faster than most people have themselves. <laughs> for those looking for a high-end custom gaming experience, look no further than Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest has been building PCs made for gamers for over 30 years with a focus on a true high-end gaming experience. Custom cases available only through Falcon Northwest feature state-of-the-art testing and design to ensure that every component is performing at their best through thermal imaging and rigorous lab testing designed and overseen by the Falcon Northwest founder himself. With a complete lineup of systems ranging from small to large, every Falcon Northwest system includes a three-year warranty policy and a year of two-way overnight shipping coverage providing the ultimate peace of mind. To see all that Falcon Northwest has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so this is an old Asus laptop. Uh, I think it was a 2019 edition. I forget what model it actually is. The back is off of it because this is my my uh, friend who runs a company. I'm not gonna say the name for many reasons, but he, he does custom LS builds and he's built some of the fastest LSs in the country. And we're talking about compared to Texas speed and all of that, but this is a very underground type of tuner because of California. But anyway, this is his main laptop. He runs his business through this laptop. He runs all his HP tuners through this laptop, all the Holly software through this laptop, all the spark tables, all the fuel curves, years and years worth of tuning files that he's created to give him amazing baselines to start with everything from a simple NA car with a cam all the way up to twin turboed monsters putting out, you know, more than 1500 horsepower all off of this laptop and didn't back anything up. And one day, the laptop just decided to leave the chat. So I get this frantic call. Jay, my laptop uh, isn't turning on anymore and I uh, was wondering if you can give me, he's like, I've done everything I can think of, can you give me a hand? So just quick story time, uh, then we'll get into the easy part of the video here. But uh, he was using his laptop, he had it set up on a table, he was at his shop doing some work and looked over at it and it was on. Had You know, he does his invoices and his QuickBooks and everything through here. Fortunately, all his QuickBooks stuff is saved into the cloud, but nothing. It's the one time I would have been like, dude, OneDrive having set up would have been nice for those important files just to have it saved somewhere other than local storage. Um, anyway, he looked back over at his laptop and it was off. He's like, that's weird. He pushes the button and it wouldn't start up. It's plugged in, nothing would do anything. So he thought maybe the battery was bad. He replaced the battery. You'll notice I have the terminal taped down because unfortunately he, being the mechanic that he is, you know, some people are tech savvy and some people are automotive savvy and some people are both, like I consider myself to be. He is not tech savvy whatsoever. So he broke the little retention tab and actually broke the little plastic cover and everything on there. One too many Ugga Duggas on the battery. It was all the Ugga Duggas, <laughs> I'm telling you. So anyway, I take the NVMe out. It's sitting right here in my test bench right now because I went, well, that should be easy enough. Let's go ahead and just throw it on my test bench. Um, can grab your tuner files and everything off of there. You could also do it by just using like an external enclosure like this. This is actually the one that he bought because he tried doing that, to be fair. So I just have a drive chilling in here right now. Uses USB-C, which would make it plenty fast. If you can hook it up directly to the motherboard, that'd be better because you actually get even more throughput and speed than you would with the USB-C cable, depending on the cable. And when I go to look at the, the drive, this is what I met with. This is actually his OS drive right here. And when I went into it, I'm like, this is very interesting. There's literally nothing on here. Um, it's acting like it is some sort of a, cause he told me all of his tuning files were saved in a folder called HP tuners inside is my documents. So I went to public my documents, nothing's there. Go into the administrator profile, go into documents, nothing there. This is quite literally like the most bare version of Windows that you would ever find in terms of a file structure. It's like you installed Windows and then never touched it. There's literally nothing in it whatsoever. But then I noticed this partition right here, this local disk E. Now, if I come up to disk management, you can see right here, here is his drive right here. We have our OS partition, says it's a healthy basic data partition. We have the uh, EFI system partition. And then we have over here this um, healthy recovery, right? And then we have over here disk E, which is only 27.25 gigabytes of raw. That's not good, okay? That tells me, 
That's actually the same drive, believe it or not. It's just partitioned into two separate drives. And when I go to access that data, this is what I get. You need to format the disk in drive E before you can use it. Format it now? No, no, never say that because anything that was on there that you could potentially get will be gone. Now there are ways to recover it even after a, lo a low level format, but we don't wanna go down that route. We wanna go down the easy route. So I said cancel, then it says E is not accessible. The volume does not contain a recognized file system. Please make sure that all required file system drivers are loaded and that the volume is not corrupted. Also too, it's important to note on the OS drive right here, I, I did not have access to it. It kept saying the access denied because I had to go in and actually set my user profile to have access to that drive because it was set up in such a way that only this Asus Mac, uh, almost a MacBook, this Asus laptop could access it. Now that's a pretty easy workaround. Um, I'm not even gonna show you that today because that is neither here nor there because it's actually this drive we need access to. So he said he saw that too when he plugged it into like another computer with that external. And he's like, thank God I didn't format it. I'm like, yeah, cause that might've been the first instinct. Oh, Windows is saying, do this thing, I'm gonna do this thing. So here's what we're gonna do. There is a piece of software you can use called Recover. It's not Recover, it's Recover. This is a free utility. Uh, I, I'm not even gonna put the link in the description because you can find it on, on different hosts, but I don't want to DDoS their website, although it's gonna happen. I'm also gonna point out, what we're about to do is completely free. There is a paid version. Act fast, because we've done this in the past before where I show a really neat utility that's very useful that has a free portion to it, and then after our video goes live, they go, oh my God, this YouTuber talked about us. Let's now put it behind the paywall. So act fast because it might end up behind a paywall unintentionally and then later it'll go back to free after all of the heat dies down after this video. But I'm still doing the video because it's important. So when you open it up, I'm right click, run as administrator. It should do it by default, which is why it has a little icon, but I like to do it for good measure. I don't do, do not show this wizard on startup and I'll show you why, because we have options here. We wanna show all files or look for pictures only or look for music files only look for documents only, look for videos or compressed files or emails. So you can say show all files or only look for these file types. So if you're, if somebody was like, oh my God, I lost all my baby photos. I don't know what happened, blah, blah, blah. Even if they formatted the drive, you could be like, well, let's just look for all JPEGs, all GIFs, all uh, PNGs. You just look for image files. We're doing all files because I'm trying to recover this drive for him. So I'm saying next on that. Now, I'm not sure it says search every file on this computer, and that's gonna include every attached drive. We don't want that, that would take a very long time, especially if you're running spinning drives, SATA drives, or anything other than NVMe because of the slowness of those drives versus NVMe. You can say search my media card or iPod. Um, you can say search in my documents only, or in recycle bin, or in a specific location. So we're gonna do specific location and click browse. That's now gonna bring up just a normal, like old school looking file explorer. Now what's gonna happen here when I click on drive E once again, it's gonna do the same thing where it says, do you wanna format the drive? No, don't format the drive. That is bad, don't do that. Click cancel, we get the same message we got before when we were in file explorer, cause technically this is file explorer right here. Hit okay, you'll notice it's now highlighted and hit okay. Now when I hit next, we have two options here. We have enable deep scan or no deep scan. This is the way I tend to do it. I do it without the deep scan first because I want to get an idea of whether or not it can even see anything on the drive. So I'm hitting net a start without deep scan enabled. So these are all the, the files that are on that drive. Now here's the thing. You're going to notice some green dots, some orange dots, some red dots. This is reading every single file that is on the drive, you can see even the deleted files. So this is this is cool if you're trying to recover something off a drive that you may have accidentally uh, already overwritten. You can actually get back previous versions of that file as well. And the paid version is actually a better tool for that because it allows you to actually go in and see versions of files so you can find older versions if you've accidentally overwritten something. But the free version right now, we just want the file, any file available to us. Now you can see it's only showing a couple of things that like, for instance, Edge, user data, safe browsing, Edge, uh, comms, Unistore, and then you get this dollar sign extend deleted on almost everything. Now I'm not using any of this, 
Uh, also, one thing I wanna point out, it shows that there's no overwritten clusters detected in that file, but you can also see new versions of a file that was overwritten. So this is where I was saying on the paid version, you could go and actually find older versions of a file if you need it. That is not gonna do us any good because that only found 1,100 files. Not the files that we want because I know where I'm looking for is the E drive. I'm looking for the user folder. I'm looking for the My Documents folder. I'm looking for a folder called HP Tuners that has all the stuff in there that we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this, reopen it, go through all those steps again. Now, the reason why I say don't show this wizard is because it'll save your previous settings. So I want to control where we look every single time. So I'm gonna go for all files in that location. Once again, let it yell at me that it's broken. Hit okay. Now we can click deep scan. Now check this out. If we do deep scan, look how many files it finds. 167,325 files. Now the thing is the deep scan, depending on how big your drive is and how full it is, it's gonna take a while. I've already done this, spoiler alert. I've already recovered the files and I've already given them to him, but I figured this would be a useful video for you guys. And that it says one hour, it really took about four. Now this drive is, this partition is only 25 gigabytes. If you were doing this with say a four terabyte drive that's mostly full, you can expect it to potentially take a day or more. That is worth it, right? Than paying your, sending your drive off to a recovery specialist that's gonna use more intricate tools than this to recover the data. But I wanna know now whether or not the files we need are there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel and it will show me what it's already found. But look, now we have more information. If I click path and sort by pathway, we still have all the extended deleted stuff, but check this out. Documents, there's his Holly files see what they are individual configuration we have fuel tables spark tables logs hp tuner scanner logs lots of them and even some file names that were specific to certain customers and stuff now you're going to see there's a lot of red on this and a lot of it says unrecoverable even though it says unrecoverable we're going to go ahead and take the chance to recover the data because any data that's recoverable is better than nothing right so we can now, even though I didn't finish the deep scan, say, I'm just gonna bring his whole My Documents folder over. Start at the start at the top of My Documents, come all the way down to the bottom of My Documents, shift click, right click, recover highlighted. And then we can say where we want them to go. So I'm just gonna do a desktop folder here, sure. Make a new folder called recover, I don't know, whatever, right? So that is now where we're gonna save those files. It is now save those files there. So here's those HP tuner log, or those HP tuner files right here that I was saying that we need and some of the customer data and whatnot. So fortunately we were able to recover quite a few of the files that he needs. In fact, um, I did recover already the entire drive, which is all right here. So anyway, my point is, it's a free tool that will allow you to, even though it seems like your data is corrupt, because what we believe happened here is we believe something shorted on this board. Don't know how, don't know why. This board has actually traveled faster than many humans have, uh, considering this this mother this this laptop has sat passenger seat in many more than 180 mile per hour runs for tuning purposes on professional driver and closed track. So I can tell you right now, this thing has gone through hell. It is from 2019, the top, you can't really tell, it's got dents and scratches in it. Um, he's even like completely polished the trackpad with his fingers. <laughs> this thing is grimy and gross, but it lived in a shop and it lived gloriously for about six years until something just finally left the chat and unfortunately took the drive with it. I, I wouldn't trust this even if we sent it to someone to try and repair it because it did take data. A lot of those files are corrupt and some of those HP files are corrupt as well. But getting back any sort of that data is better than getting back none of that data. So the moral of the story here is not how to recover your data when something bad happens. It's learn from other people's lessons to back up your important data before you have to go through this route. Unfortunately, this route is going to always exist because plenty of people do not back up their data. Um, I can tell you right now, one of the things Phil's very adamant about is backing up very important files and stuff onto a separate drive, even separate from our NAS, in case uh, anything were to happen. He has our most pertinent files that we need to make our content stored separately from everything else. So it's a redundancy backup. 
It's very important to do that. So now he's going to back up all these files and stuff weekly, which is better to deal with losing one week's worth of work than six years worth of work on this laptop. So, and then he did say, hey, I bought an HP, HP laptop to replace it. And he said he absolutely hates it. So he's got to now go through the laptop hunting phase to find one that uh, is up to the task. Anyway, that's a really neat tool. There's a lot more that it can do, but I just want to show you what the free light version is able to do. And if you are sitting there with a drive, you're like, man, there's, there's things on here I just don't know how to get. Recovery data specialist probably could recover this and uncorrupt it. I wouldn't be surprised if a true data specialist could do that, but they charge anywhere from hundreds to thousands of dollars to do that. And if you're like, oh yeah, I need this for my business, you can expect that price to exponentially go up because they now know the, the work involved is not, we're gonna charge you based on the effort we put in to recover the data. We're gonna charge you on how valuable that data is to you. Unfortunately, you have to pay those prices because if nobody else can do it or you can't do it yourself, how important is that data to you? Then the price is there. So start here first, never format a drive thinking, oh, that'll fix it because you'll get rid of all your stuff. But I can tell you right now that drive cannot be trusted. That drive is no longer uh, any good. And we are going to basically have to destroy that drive and make sure that it never ends, ends up in another system ever. Anyway, there you go, guys. If you can get it directly into the motherboard, that's more preferred than doing it through an external device like this. Um, but yeah. All right, guys, there you go. Sound off down below your horror stories on data that you've lost. And if you've recovered it, maybe put how you recovered it down there. And if you think there's a better tool than recover, make sure you sound off because it, I mean, we may use it. Other people may use it and it may be very, very helpful, especially if it's free or maybe low cost, uh, you know, paid app. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one.